Today's message is titled, Healing and Healing. It's based on Psalm 23, verses 1 to 5. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. In this sermon series, we've been looking at the metaphor that's found throughout the Old and New Testaments in the Bible that compares God or Jesus to a good shepherd and us, his people, as their flock. Nowhere is that metaphor more obvious than in the uh, 23rd Psalm, presumed to have been written by the shepherd boy who became king of Israel, David. Last week we talked about how a good shepherd leads their flock up to the high country during the heat of the summer to find better grazing grounds. Though the journey there may be filled with danger as they walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it was worth the trip to get to the higher country. And good shepherds knew the path and had prepared a place there for the flock. Today we will focus on that part of the 23rd Psalm which says, Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a place for me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And you anoint my head with oil. As Charles Allen says in his book, God's Psychiatry, The sheep is a helpless animal. It has no weapon with which to fight. It's easy prey to any wild beast of the field, and that's why it's a comfort to the flock that the shepherd carries a rod, which is a heavy, hard club that's about two or three feet long. David knew how important this weapon was, as in 1 Samuel chapter 17, we see description of how he fought off and killed a lion and a bear while protecting his sheep. It says that he struck them with something, and you can bet it was a rod. Philip Keller, the author of A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23, says that the rod was important for a number of reasons. The rod, he says, stood as a symbol of the owner's strength and power and authority. And besides protecting himself and his flock with the rod, the shepherd also used it to discipline any sheep that tried to wander away. If a sheep started to wander away from the flock, making it easy prey for predators in this area... Or if it was getting close to poisonous weeds or other hazards, the shepherd would throw the rod in front of the straying sheep to steer it back to the group. It was also used to examine the sheep from time to time. Ezekiel 20 verse 37 points out that sheep passed under the rod. Since their wool might hide wounds and disease and other problems, from time to time the shepherd would inspect his flock one by one as they entered the gate of the sheepfold. He would stop them with his rod, and he would use it to pull back the wool and look for areas that needed attention. Philip Keller believes that this was in the mind of the psalmist who wrote Psalm 139, verse 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. The rod was the shepherd's way of protecting his flock from their enemies, even when that enemy was themselves. The psalm says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The staff is probably the most recognizable tool of the shepherd. It's a unique tool used exclusively for the carrying of sheep. It was about eight feet long, and the end of it was turned into a crook. If a sheep slipped down the side of a steep slope and was hanging helpless on the ledge below, the shepherd could reach down, place the crook over the small chest of the sheep, and lift it back onto the path. The staff was a comfort to the sheep because it knew that with it, He could help them in their time of need. In addition, since touching a lamb might leave a human scent that would scare the mother, the shepherd would use his staff to lift a little lamb and place it back with its mother where it belongs. If a sheep presented signs that the shepherd needed to examine it closer, he might use his staff to draw the sheep close to him for a good check over. And if a sheep was starting to wander off or was dangerously close to a steep drop, the shepherd might just lay the staff against the side of the sheep and gently guide it to where it was safest. Philip Keller likens the staff to the Holy Spirit which God gives to us who accept Jesus Christ to draw us close to him and to guide us in the right paths. 
His, he recalls also his own sheep getting stuck in a, a bush of brambles or wild roses, searching for a few mouthfuls of green grass, and getting their wool stuck in the thorns so that they couldn't get out. He says, we're like that. Many of our jams and impasses are of our own making. In stubborn, self-willed, self-assertion, we keep pushing ourselves into a situation that we cannot get out of by ourselves. Then in tenderness, compassion, and care, our shepherd comes to us. He draws near and in tenderness lifts us by his spirit out of the difficulty and dilemma. His rod and his staff comfort us. The psalm continues by saying that the shepherd also prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies. Philip Keller notes that most of the best high country sheep grazing lands are flat areas called mesas. Interestingly, the word mesa means table. Many Bible scholars seem to think that the metaphor in Psalm 23 shifts at this point from the sheep shepherd theme to a theme more like that of the parable of the wedding feast. But anyone who has worked with sheep has no problem seeing the intent of David when he talks about preparing a table in the presence of enemies. Literally, a good shepherd has gone ahead of his flock and scouted out the land to prepare it for summer grazing. Philip Keller recalls taking his children up in the highlands to dig up little white camas flowers, which, if eaten, would paralyze and then kill a, a, a lamb or, or sheep. Shepherds had to scout out poisonous plants and remove them, locate and eradicate thorny plants and sharp rocks that might cut the sheep's nose and cause infections. The shepherds also had to look for signs of predators like coyotes or wolves or bears. One of the reasons he would use his rod and staff to keep the flock together is to prevent them from becoming easy prey for one of these predators lurking in the rocks around the grazing grounds. The shepherds might also look for holes that snakes might emerge from to bite the sheep on the nose. Charles Slimming, author of He Leadeth Me, The Shepherd's Life in Palestine, says that the shepherd would put oil in the hole of an adder to make its exit difficult, and then he would put oil on the nose of the sheep to repel the serpent. The sheep graze in peace because the shepherd has gone before them and prepared a table for them. He's alert to the dangers and prepared for them. As Philip Keller notes, the parallel in the Christian's life is that Christ, our good shepherd, has himself already gone before us in every situation, in every extremity that we might encounter. We are told emphatically that he was tempted in all points like we are. We know he entered fully and completely and very intimately into the lives of men upon our planet. He has known our sufferings, experienced our sorrows, and endured our struggles in this life. And because of this, he understands us. He has totally identified himself with humanity. He has, therefore, a care and a compassion beyond our ability to grasp. Whatever we're going through, we can be sure he has been in that situation before and he will walk with us as we go through it. And because of this, we can be assured of victory. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. Max Lucado, in his book, Traveling Light, notes that in ancient Israel, shepherds used oil for three purposes, to repel insects, to prevent conflicts, and to heal wounds. Bugs bug people, he says, but they can kill sheep. Flies, mosquitoes, and gnats can turn the summer into a time of torture for the livestock. For example, if nose flies start succeeding in depositing their eggs in the soft membrane of the sheep's nose, these nose flies' eggs become worm-like larvae, which then drive the sheep crazy. Philip Keller notes that for relief of this annoyance, sheep will deliberately beat their heads against trees, rocks, posts, or brush. And when the infestation is really bad, a sheep may even kill itself in a desperate effort to end the aggravation. That's why when flies are swarming, sheep panic. They run, they hide, they toss their heads up and down for hours, they forget to eat, they aren't able to sleep, they stop growing, ewes stop feeding their lambs. It can destroy a flock. So the shepherd anoints the sheep with an oil-like repellent to keep the insects away. He anoints their heads with oil, and what a relief it provides them. It allows them to live in peace. Oil is often a metaphor for the Spirit of God. God's Spirit can also protect us from those things that seek to steal our peace. We can rest in perfect peace knowing that our shepherd is caring for us and protecting us from harm. Another reason to anoint the sheep's uh, head with oil is to prevent injuries during mating season when competing rams will lower their heads and headbutt each other. 
sometimes sheep are their own worst enemy. The danger doesn't always come in the form of things outside the flock, predators or pests or plants that are harmful. Sometimes they inflict the wounds on each other, and oiling their heads helps them glance off each other when they butt heads rather than cause serious injury. Butting heads with others is a problem for us human members of God's flock, too. Philip Keller shares that as a pastor, he found that much of the grief, the wounds, the hurt, the ill will, the unforgiven things in people's lives could usually be traced back to old rivalries or jealousies or battles that had broken out between believers. Scores of skeptical souls, he says, will never enter a church simply because of way back in their experience, someone had battered them badly. Brothers and sisters, we are called to love one another, and this should not be so. May our good shepherd anoint our stubborn heads with the oil of his spirit. May he watch over us and bring us back in line when we go astray. But even with the shepherd's watchful care, sheep still get wounded from time to time, and sometimes sheep wander off. Sometimes they push into thorny places or wound themselves on sharp rocks hidden in the grass. And that's why the shepherd makes them pass under the rod, and be examined for wounds and diseases. Charles Allen says that's when the shepherd would apply soothing and healing oil. Instead of becoming infected, the hurt will soon heal. Dr. Allen finds comfort in the fact that the psalm says, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows, instead of you anoint our heads with oil, and our cups overflow. You see, God cares for us individually, one by one, like a shepherd lovingly inspects and takes care of his sheep. Our feelings can be hurt. The world can be a cruel place. We can get discouraged and tired. The burden of life can feel unbearable. But we have a shepherd who cares for us and knows us by name. He heals our wounds. Philip Keller reminds us that only one application of oil for the sheep was not enough for the entire summer. It was a process that had to be repeated. The sheep have to return to the shepherd again and again for a fresh anointing, for protection and healing. And in the same way, we must come back to our shepherd for a new anointing of oil to ward off the flies in our lives. We must continually seek God's spirit to counteract the things that aggravate us and wound us and threaten us. Or as Max Lucado says, sheep aren't the only ones who need preventative care and sheep aren't the only ones who need a healing touch. We also, we also get irritated with each other. We butt heads, and then we get wounded. Many of our disappointments in life begin as irritations. The large portion of our problems are not lion-sized attacks, but rather the day-to-day -day swarm of frustrations and mishaps and heartaches. You don't get invited to the dinner party. You don't make the team. You don't get the scholarship. Your boss doesn't notice your hard work. Your husband doesn't notice your new dress. Your neighbor doesn't notice the mess in his yard. Like sheep, you don't sleep well, you don't eat well. You may even hit your head against a tree a few times, or you may hit your head against a person. Some of the deepest hurts, Max says, comes from butting heads with people. So we, like sheep, get wounded. And we, like sheep, have a shepherd. And he will do for you what a shepherd does for his sheep. He will take care of you. I titled this message, Healing and Healing, and the last healing is spelled with two E's, healing as in a pet that is trained to follow close behind his master. And you might be offended by the fact that I'm comparing this to dog. You might be, you might be offended by the fact that I'm comparing this to sheep, for that matter. But that's what, what I took away from this psalm, is that there's a healing that needs to be taking place here as well, that our need is to come to God to have our wounds healed, and then for our own good to learn to heal to draw close to him, to follow him closely, to trust him, to lead us, to protect us, to prosper us, to care for us. Like sheep passing under the rod, your first step is to recognize his authority and go to God. Your second step is to assume the right posture and bow before God. In order for the sheep to be anointed, they must stand still. They lower their heads and let the shepherd do his work. They trust in him that that work is for their good. So likewise, I encourage you to go to your shepherd. Go to God. Bow to him. Trust in him. Won't you? Be healed in every sense of that word. Find your healing and then follow him closely. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we recognize your authority and your compassionate care. 
your rod and your staff. We thank you for sending your spirit to, to prepare a table for us, to help us ward off the dangers of things that will poison our lives and relationships, things that threaten to rip us apart. Thank you for being our shield and our shelter, our mighty defender. Heal our wounded places and fill us with your spirit so that we might walk in the paths that you would have us to walk. And keep us close to you when we are tempted to wander away. And all we like sheep have wandered away sometimes. Keep us close to you until that day when we come to the place our good shepherd Jesus has gone into in order to prepare for us. For it's in his name that we pray. Amen. This is Pastor Randy. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace now and forevermore. Amen.